hello everybody here i am doc so we will discuss today about the model selection criteria which are which are available so uh, okay before diving into the model selection criteria which are available we will see why we need them and what is the purpose of them okay so let's get started so actually what happens is that we uh, uh we uh, uh we have uh, uh, what the statistician do is that they create few models for example they create m1 m2 m3 and m4 and let's say m5 so uh i have uh, uh, uh let's say that the uh, i i am working on a problem and i have created the five models which actually i think would solve the problem or uh, would actually help in predicting the uh, uh, predicting the future outcomes of the of the data which have i have i have fed in type of data i have fed in so there are five models which are available with me and uh, they uh, they have comparative uh, r squares available so R1 square, R2 square, R3 square, and R4 square and R5 square. So, and also uh, when when I am creating the model, I am using different in uh, regressor, uh, different uh, number of regressors. For example, regressors are the independent input uh, parameter I am feeding into the model. So I would say that the model M1 has the regressor K1 it has a regressor k2 and regressor k3 and regressor k4 regressor k5 the uh, 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 for example if i would say that uh, let's suppose this condition holds true uh, k1 is less than k2 is less than k3 is less than k4 is less than k5 so we all know uh, when we, when i talk about the accuracy accuracy increases as i increases my number of regressors but as i increases my number of regressors in the mod uh, model i am increasing the complexity as well so the complexity is increasing as i am increasing the number of uh, model uh, number of regressors in the model so uh, so there should be some trade off as I am uh, between the accuracy and the complexity of the model, as I am increasing the complexity, I am moving to the condition known as overfitting, where I would give every regressor available to me, every any every regressor which is available to me, and uh, what I will do, uh, and it will give me, uh, it will learn, even that it will start learn the model will start learning the data instead of the pattern which is available. So it leads me to a condition known as overfitting so i just uh, uh, i uh, what is my uh, 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 what i want to solve is that i have uh, i have selected the five best models which are available with me after uh, regularization after uh, everything i have selected the five best available models with me and now i want to know which model should i take uh, should uh, should I take and move forward? So there are certain model selection criteria which have been discussed and which uh, help us to balance between the accuracy and the complexity of the model. Okay, so let's uh, directly dive into them. So the first one is uh, AIC. AIC is basically a Kaike information criterion. So uh, uh, the formula for AIC is somewhat uh, like uh, 2k minus 2 log of likelihood function. Okay, so here the k is the number of parameters i a number of regressors I am using to create a model. So as the number of regressors increasing, it is penalizing my model. So it is asking me to reduce the number of regressors. Also, as I increase the number of regressors, my likelihood function increases. Likelihood function basically tells me how better is the model fitting to the data. So the greater the likelihood function, the better is the model. So as I st uh, keep on increasing the regressors or the input independent variables, the likelihood function increases up to a certain limit and after that there is no effect on the likelihood function uh, uh, on the likelihood function and thus uh, uh, and thus 
uh, so AIC penalize on the number of uh, AIC basically penalize on increasing the number of regressors and it rewards when the likelihood function increases so when uh, and when I draw a graph of uh, AIC versus the number of uh, regressors first when I increases the number of regressors I am getting rewarded more because the uh, likelihood function increases so I am getting rewarded more and the uh, AIC decreases drastically so it will reach the minimum low and after that there is not much increase in the likelihood function and so the AIC starts increasing when I, uh, so uh, uh, what the statistician do is that they take this area and all the models which are available in this area with these number of k's are taken as a considered models so these are the considered models and uh, uh, based upon some business and other things we will see that if uh, which of the among models should be selected and uh, which among the models should be rejected few models may be rejected based upon the inferential statistics as well so let's not dive into them so this is basically the formula of AIC and how the AIC help us determining the best possible model so AIC the value of AIC is usually negative so we uh, we have to ideally and theoretically we have to pick up the AIC having the uh, model having the minimum AIC okay now let's see how the B how BIC is uh, different uh, from AIC okay so BIC is somewhat similar BIC the full form of the BIC is the Bayesian uh, Bayesian uh, Bayesian information criterion so basically the formula of BIC is somewhat like this it is somewhat similar to the AIC if you would see there is an introduction of a new term that is log of n where n is the total number of data points that is the total number of the size of the data which I am having so if I have a large data, si uh, data set then it is uh, penalizing it and uh, it is penalizing it this is the penalization term it is penalizing on two things one is a number of large data site, uh, sets that is the number of large data points and other is a k that is the total number of uh, uh, regressors included in the model included in the model and similarly it is rewarding for the likelihood function if greater the likelihood function it is rewarding the uh, my BIC so the graph similar to the AIC would form for the BIC if I would consider the BIC the graph similar to the AIC would form and you uh, statistician usually consider the low BIC models uh, for further consideration and reject the all other models having the high BIC uh, basically there there this is a fundamental difference between the BIC and AIC formula wise other uh, fundamental theoretical difference between AIC and BIC is that basically uh, for uh, uh, for BIC that is a Bayesian uh, uh, that is a Bayesian information criterion what happened is that uh, 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 it consider uh, there is a prior prob probability of uh, considering a model for example if I have model m1 m2 and m3 then I have uh, I will give the same prior probability to all the models that is 1 by 3 1 by 3 and 1 by 3 I will give the pr same prior probability of selection of these model means I would say that the probability of selection of all the models is same but some statisticians differ on the fact that they say that the prior probability should not be same and instead it should depend on the value of the k that is the number of regressors we are taking in so uh, there is a partial, uh, a partial uh, difference between the BIC and the AIC that is the on the basis of the prior probability 
also the in other facts that the BIC uh, when the pro uh, BIC gives for example it says the model the pro it uh, the output of the BIC is like that it says the model M1 is uh, have the uh, it uh, BIC is predicting the best model among M1 M2 and M3 and it says that the M2 is the best model and M3 and M1 uh, have the zero probability of being the best model and the uh, M2 have a one probability of the best model so some suggestion differ on this fact uh, that this is that what will happen if actually my best model is not among the set of the models it's uh, for example it is MX it is the best model it uh, it is not has been calculated or uh, it has not been it is not available so still the so the BIC what BIC is doing BIC is uh, uh, predicting uh, is saying that M2 is the best available best model uh, among uh, M2 is the best model uh, with the uh, probability 1 whereas uh, if uh, we will consider AIC AIC uh, gives us the probability of like uh, it, it will say that it has a probability uh, just give me a minute. it will say it has a probability of 0.6 it has a probability of 0.2 being the best model it has a probability of 0.2 for being the best model so it do not say uh, that the M2 is the best model available. It says that uh, it has a uh, not zero one criteria, but uh, majority probability given to the best model and best available model, and the minority probability given to the uh, other models. So the uh, theoretical wise, that is a difference between AIC and BIC. There is also uh, one more criterion, model selection criterion, which is used that is uh, mellow CP mellow CP basically uh, mellow CP uh, it has a different uh, formula so if we will look at the formula of mellow CP it has been it is approximate formula it says that this uh, uh, standard square error upon the mean square error minus n plus 2p this is the basic formula of the uh, mellow cp standard square error is based on the model which i have uh, the model uh, which i have uh, created instead of uh, p i would say 2k so uh, MSE is a mean square error of a model uh, of a complete model having uh, uh, have, considering all the regressors available it is a st uh, squared uh, standard square error of a model with regressors k it is a mean square error of uh, with all the available regressors minus total number of data points plus twice uh, twice the number of regressors i have used in the current model so similarly it is uh, uh, it is uh, rewarding me it is penalizing me for the it is it will penalize you for the large number of uh, regressors and reward you for the uh, for, uh, for the smaller uh, for the smaller uh, standard errors so there is one specific i would say uh, difference uh, the one specific or one attractive feature of the uh, mellow cp is that uh, it says that all the models oops, I think I have uh, drawn it a little bit so basically it says that uh, if I draw a straight line and on the axis, axis if I would have the number of parameters k and here I have mellow cp and for k cp is equal to k what, this is what this line suggests cp equal to k all the models bef, uh, below this can be considered can be considered all the models above this should be straightforward rejected this is a distinctive feature for the mellow cp so if i say that i have uh, i can take k equal to 11 so or uh, all the models 
with CP also less than uh, less than 11 should be considered for the should be considered for uh, for the uh, for the considerations and for the use and all the models which I have created having CP greater than 11 at k equal to 11 should be discarded. So this is a somewhat distinctive features of the of a mellow CP. So uh, today what we learn is uh, uh, about the uh, AIC, BIC, and mellow CP, which uh, which are the model various model selection criteria. When uh, we have a various available model, and we are confused which model should we consider for the for future, and which model should we discard straight away, then we can use these uh, small uh, these uh, criterion to help us uh, to help us uh, take a bunch of model forward, and upon based upon the inferential statistic and the business uh, requirement, we can discard few of them and make the make one of the make one among them our final model Th thank you that's from my side have a great day bye